Welcome. This project is uh, going to review designing pots and um, specifically with succulents. Now you're looking at a photo of a group of pots on my patio and I um, thought what I'd do because as I started to outline this it became very lengthy. I'm going to try and um, segment this in ways that this is how I approach a project like this. So we're going to break this down into um, the overall look that you want, um, selecting pots and selecting plants and then designing with the plants that you've selected. So I want to get right into this. What you're looking at is a group of pots that I put together on my patio and the first thing that I do is I decide the overall look that I want, um, just like any plant design. And uh, you're going to get some ideas uh, from this video. There's going to be quite a few pots and the designs shown in here. So I wanted this to be a resource in that regard, as well as um, talking about how I put things together. But, um, you know, the first thing to do is just figure out the general look you want. So here's some of the things that I mean by that. Um, the pots ha can have a very strong character. So in this case, you're looking at terracotta pots, and they're from different places in the world. Um, they're Italian, they're Greek, and then there's, you know, Mexican. There's a lot of different things. There's uh, and a lot of pots from Asia. And... That's the starting point because that specifically has such a strong architectural style that if you don't start on the right foot with that, you're going to be fighting it the entire time um, trying to solve it with the plant. So what you want to do is first start off with, well, what's the overall feel and look that I want? Right here you see a recent project I did with what I call the pot gallery. And the idea here was each pot and each design within the pot had its own character, but then there's the overall feel of how did these pots feel together as a group. So there's a design within the design, and then there's the added design of the plants inside of each of the pots. And um, so just depending on your situation, this is how where I like to start is what's the overall thing I'm trying to accomplish with this design. And a lot of times it's as simple as one single pot. Now when you look at this, so deciding on the pot first. That's my step one. So selecting the pot, there's size, color, and style are the three main drivers for the pot selection. What you see here are some different styles, shapes, um, and also sizes. You notice that I put the larger sizes in the back of this grouping. But many times you're just dealing with one pot. So the driver for me uh, initially is what's the size uh, for the space and the situation that I have. Then secondly, what style am I going to want overall? Um, you can't really change that with your plant selection. So for me, um, getting that size set up first is, um, is the main driver. Once we've determined the size, now we're talking about color. Now sometimes with terracotta, the color is the color, but um, in this case, the client really loves this aquamarine, teal, green kind of spectrum. And so we found some different colors that uh, played well inside of that. Uh, we found four different sources, so it wasn't easy, but that combined with the different sizes uh, really were a strong part of what, uh, why we decided to buy the pots we did for this project. And then you get to um, style. Now style for me is probably the strongest one because at the end of the day, um, if you buy a terracotta pot and it's large and or it's the right size and it's the um, and it's the right color, well, at the end of the day, if the style's all wrong for what you're trying to achieve, then you still aren't anywhere. So the style is a really big deal, and I th I find it's a, it's fun to play around with this and um, be a bit eclectic. But again, that's a design choice and that's very subjective. So um, those are your three big drivers for selecting your pots. And then once you've selected your pots, now we move on to the plant selection. 
So when it comes to selecting plants, first thing I would say is look at the size of the plants for your composition. If you look at some of these pots I'm showing you, you've got large plants and then they're combined with smaller ones. Some of these pots are all medium with a little small. So the overall look is being, you want to reverse engineer it. This one has tall upright plants and a medium upright pot and then it has things draping over the edge. This one has a large, heavily textured plant as the center point, and then things on the sides that complement that. Next is your color choice. So you're going to see here that these general colors are red, orange, and on the yellow side of green. Secondly, this other one is on the blue, gray, and even the burgundy side and so these colors were very specific about what I was working with and the vibe I was wanting to create so you want to create a grouping of plants that all play nicely together in terms of color. Also you want to make sure that your plant coloration is working well with your pot coloration so at the very least don't have them clashing but you can see here that these warmer colors of the yellow, orange, burgundy are working nicely with the terracotta of that pot and this next one you have this teal color of the pot working nicely with the uh, plants and the colors that we use there so make sure that those are working well this overall composition is is the big at the end of the day when you love it or you don't it's going to be whether you get each one of these elements dialed in one of the key design components I will tell you that I focus on is simplicity. I find that this is just so simple and beautiful because the element itself is what's interesting and then it's just repeated. Here again, these are all simple forms that are similar. The subtleties between them are just that, they're subtle. And in this case, there's five elements, maybe six but there's one dominant one and the others are accents on there. This next, next example is what I'm talking about. There's so many different plants in a small space and then the yellow for me is a disconnect with the gray. It's hot and the others are all cool and so my eye jumps around to the different splashes of yellow. So too many colors, too many textures and one that doesn't quite belong there. So be careful, keep it simple, and you'll be a lot better off than if you try and overdo it with too many choices. So when picking out the overall composition, I'm going to recommend you do it one of two, or I'll say three ways. So one is you pick a primary plant that is dominant for texture or color, or usually size. It's size and or texture. Then second, and it might be color, I'll show you an example in a minute. The other option is to go with um, all fairly similar, monochromatic, maybe all one plant. And then the other is go with um, variations on a theme. So colors that um, are like this that have a lot in common, but they're subtle and the texture play is where the interest is created. So this is the hard part. This is where you have to decide what you're going to include and limit it. As I said, keep it simple. So now it's a matter of going to the nursery. And this is assuming you live in an area where there's a nursery that sells succulents. So you know what those places are. If you're there, you already know that. If not, they probably don't sell them or because they don't grow well there. So you go to a nursery that has succulents and now you're shopping and just like any other kind of shopping you're just having a good time and you're connecting with what feels good to you. The nice thing is is what I do is I start grabbing what I like and then I set them aside and you can set them on the ground in a grouping and just start to compose something as if it was sitting in a pot. At this point, I think you already should have your pot or have it picked out so you know what you're responding to, as we mentioned earlier. And so the size and the coloration is already established. Now you're picking out plants that will complement that, and you're just playing around, assembling them together. And that's what I like about these is 
you can do multiple designs, you can do iterations, and you can just uh, have a whole lot of fun with it right there in the nursery. I've done this, and this is the problem. I end up with way too many plants and way too many pots because it's so fun, and there's just endless compositions you can do with succulents. And um, so really, that's that's the end of it. It's, it's finding out what's going to work and whether you're doing a monochromatic design or one just you fall in love with this one plant and you repeat it or you get more um, intricate than that, that's where it becomes very personal and it's like painting or drawing or something else that's a self-expression. You're just doing what feels best for you. So that is uh, pot design with succulents and uh, I'll just show you some different things that I've seen, whether I saw somebody else's work or did it myself, to give you some stimulation and some ideas and uh, I wish you luck with it. It's a whole lot of fun. Uh, enjoy.